Right, so welcome back to the shop and today we are basically this is a continuation on the car versus bikes video because there are a lot of questions and I have to get my fucking notes out in a minute but anyway a lot of people did comment saying wasn't aerodynamics important with that and then the same comment that I've seen quite well I've seen once or twice and then I've seen it quite a lot more since people asked that question um, just to see what the consensus was and I noticed that a lot of people are saying the drag of a motorcycle is shit compared to that of a car. And this is not true. This is the same thing. Um, as, well, this is one of those things where the internet takes, or people on the internet take, one little bit of science and run away with it. So we have what we call the coefficient of drag. And before I even start going down this rabbit hole, this is not my profession, this is not what I studied, and so on. Um, so there'll be a bit of terminology I get wrong or whatever. Please forgive me, but the the whole um, concept is what I'm basically aiming for here. Like I said, this is not my thing. So, um, if you look on Wikipedia, let me get my fucking notes out. So, if you go onto Wikipedia, thank you Wikipedia, <laughs> and you look at, it has this picture when it talks about the coefficient of drag. It has a ball, and then it has a, semis, a, half, a hemisphere, and then it has a cone, so obviously a cylindrical cone, and then it has a cube and all this, that and the other. And if you look, it has the coefficient of friction, it's a 0 0.47, not friction, drag, <laughs> 0 0.42, because uh, coefficient of friction is what I deal with instead of the coefficient of drag. And what's this say? Uh, cube. Uh, is 1.05 so straight away of what these coefficient of friction numbers are coefficients which means that they are dimensionless arbitrary numbers that we uh, apply to something to make it comparable between other things what you'll notice is is that all these coefficient of drags uh, numbers here um, don't mention anything about size and that's the problem. There is no mention of how big these things are You know, so the coefficient of friction um, The friction fucking hell the drag of a ball that is six millimeters is obviously not the same as a ball that um, That's a mile across. You know, what I mean, it's ridiculous But uh, like I say they take one number and they run away with it. So if you look at the coefficient um, of drag numbers for some cars yes so when you look at certain cars they'll have like coefficient of frictions of uh, how do you spell Prius a Prius Toyota Prius is 0 0.24 and a GTR is uh, what's it say 0 0.26 and um, even a Ford Transit is 0 0.37 right a uh, Transit and you'll read things that say stuff like, oh, the, um, <laughs> it depends who you go to and who you ask and all of it, but the CD of a motorbike is anywhere between 1 and like zero, oh, 0 0.5 to 1, something like that. It's in there somewhere. And you're like, fuck me, the coefficient of drag for a transit is better than it is a bike. But like I say, this has no scope on size. And size, surface area, is also important. Obviously, the coefficient of uh, the coefficient of drag of a bullet is 0 0.5 of a fucking bullet. <laughs> the beauty is, is a bullet's fucking tiny, so away you go. So what we need is we need the area of these two. And I did some digging. What did someone say here? Um, yeah, a, a Yamaha R1 has a coefficient of drag of 0 0.5, which is a lot more than a transit van this you know this whole thing makes no sense why do these numbers relate to this well it's um, there's form drag and then there's skin friction drag or just skin drag and form drag is when things hit it directly like this and skin friction drags if you have something like this so how much you know the, the the drag along the length of it instead of just hitting straight into it so obviously when you design things you kind of want to make them longer and pointier 
<laughs> like I said, this is simple. <laughs> this is a simple way of looking at it. So if you have a motorbike, like just say that's like this, if you stick a big cone on the front of it and the back of it, like like, like you do with streamliners, you know, the bikes that try and do world speed records and all the rest of it, then you are basically, you have the same uh, frontal area, unless you chop the rider in half or chop the bike in half or something, but you will have, you're converting more of your, your drag into um, skin drag instead of form drag, which is head on, butt on. But like I say, um, this area thing is what matters. So when you actually look at that, so basically what you have to do is you have to take the frontal area of, it depends whether to do a cross section, it's a projection, and that again is a bit, yeah, it's a bit weird. It's, it's such a rabbit hole is aerodynamics and it's something that I don't want to go down. <laughs> but if you look at the form drag, because a bike is about, I don't know, a third, a third the frontal surface area compared to most cars and all the rest of it, um, then this number, then the, the actual number that you want to know is a lot less. So if we look at there, so when you look at the CDA, you've got like a, a, a Veyron, Bugatti Veyron, that comes in at 0 0.745 meters squared. You have um, a BMW i8, so a BMW i8, that's this sleek looking fucking thing. I8, that has a uh, area of, fair key now, 2015, 0.548. And then you look at a Audi A4, so an Audi A4, that comes in at 0 0.51. So you think, all right, fair enough, you know, this is kind of obvious. Uh, a Veyron, you know, is like a fucking tank. Although, yes, they've done a lot of aerodynamics and all the rest of it. For its, uh, over its surface area, you get this number. This number is spat out. For a Hayabusa, which is a streamlined bike, but it's not twice as streamlined as say like an R1 or a GSXR or anything stupid like that it comes out at 0 0.313 so as you can see it is a lot lower than all the rest half of that of a Veyron and of course it is you know it's like if you have something like this big and you're pushing it through the air or it's like this and you're pushing it through the air you know it's it's basic there's a basic understanding to this um, but like I say, if you get the the, the, the numbers, the um, C the CD the the drag coefficient numbers, um, what was it for bloody what is it? <laughs> what was it for bloody what was it? It was zero. The only one I could find reliably for all these was the Audi A4, and it had a CD of uh, zero point two three. And then if you get your higher booster, it's going to be probably something like zero point five something. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just like I say, I couldn't find the exact data and all the rest of it because these things are hard to come by. And like I say, aerodynamics, there isn't just this simple, well, that's this and that's this. There's a lot that goes into it and it, I don't know why. Anyone who wants to do it, they're forced to do it. Anyone who's an um, aerodynamical engineer, it, they're forced to do it. No one wants to do it. No one finds it fun. It's horrible. <laughs> my old, uh, one of my old... Um, colleagues years ago an old boy who was like a retiring engineer and all the rest of it he said aerodynamics is fine when it's in a tube as soon as it's outside as soon as it's outside exterior to anything it's fucking horrible um which i totally understand but you can see that if you look at the cd which is here the cd there if you look at that you'll go well this car's a fucking shitload better than a bike yes it is it is when we're looking at the coefficient of drag of course it is. You know, we're not denying that a bike is quite, there's, you know, it's quite a bulky thing, and a lot of it is actually quite up front. Um, with cars, you've got long curves. There's a lot more um, for the size of the thing. There's a lot more um, skin friction, uh, skin drag, skin friction, skin drag. Then there is a lot more form drag. Um, but a bike is a hell of a lot smaller than a car, so hence why this number 
is, is you know is better because you have to this is not basically this has no dimension to it the cd is a coefficient it's like coefficient of friction you know you might turn and say well my tires have got a coefficient of friction of 0.8 oh great what else can you do with that you know what i mean if you're comparing one tire to another great but the fact of the matter is, is these two things are vastly different um you know cars are massive and if you're trying to plow that massive car the only way i can think about it is like this is imagine if you had a car um I'm going to do a Mr. Noddy car or something here, shit like that. A car like this, and you had a tunnel that was the shape of the car. Just say there's like an inch in it, you know, there's an inch in it here. Or you had a rider dude, you know, on his bike, like this with his handlebar sticking out and all the rest of it. And you had a tunnel that shape, you know. And you had these two tunnels. The car is ramming into a lot more air than the bike is. You know what I mean? Even if they are the same height, the width of it and all the rest of it. So you are still, if you imagine you're like a plunger, like a syringe, you are still batting through more air if you're a car than you are a bike. So this whole thing of people say, bikes have shit CDs compared to cars. Yes, that's true. Um, shit. Yeah, no, we'll go with shit. It, they're shit compared to cars. However, when you look at the areas, you basically use that... Um, coefficient the drag coefficient to actually work out what you're looking at and apply it to something with a dimension then the numbers basically change a lot and like i say it makes obvious sense pushing a bike through the air so when we're talking about um our peugeot versus our ktm yes that ktm 990 isn't one of the most aerodynamic bikes you sat up right your head's more in the wind and all the rest of it but also that fucking fly that um, Peugeot, you know, it's like a bloody brick. So, you know, one versus the other, you know, it's fair enough. And the thing is, how they work out these numbers, again, if as soon as a rider sticks his head up slightly, these numbers will all change and it all becomes horrible and a mess. And um, I hate, and yes, there's that guy who does that YouTube channel, I've, I've been watching some of his stuff, um, but I hate aerodynamics. It's just something, yeah, there's no definitive whatevers. It's all... There's a lot of approximations and a lot of um, averages and it's just very, very, very complicated. And it's only become really a proper science since the 1950s, ever since, well, 60s, 1950s, 1960s, since basically they invented computers because it is so complicated. Doing very basic fluid dynamics and aerodynamic stuff on paper is okay. Trying to work out stuff that's really useful. You need computers to calculate that stuff. Sure that shit, all the chaotic theory and all the rest of it behind it and randomization and blah, it's just all fucking horrible. As you can tell, I don't like aerodynamics. They're good when they work and all the rest of it. And the thing is, you can tell the aerodynamic thing with a bike is unless you're going to cut that bike in half, there's not much you can really do with it. Yes, you can put a massive shell on it, but that's only when you're going in a straight line. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.